Rhode Island Republicans got what they wanted. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. Only semi-facetious, you know, kind of tongue-in-cheek, but truth is, is that uh, it, it was nice to see that a financial concern of the state Republican General Assembly members was actually heard and responded to by the Speaker of the House. And, we have uh, new news on a study which will be done on this billion dollar problem trying to figure out whether IGT does its thing again or Twin River gets a bigger piece but they're certainly battling each other and it's all about that and you'll, hear, you'll learn all about it with uh, Minority Leader Blake Filippi who has been recently here but back because this is a, a breaking piece of news. Great Debian, thanks for coming in on a Monday evening. Uh, the president's got another little bit of a situation here. Now, a federal appeals court has ordered him to turn over his tax records to the Southern District of New York. Now, his lawyers say that they will appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court. And so, at stake will be, does a president, a sitting president of the United States, get a chance to hide that which has got to do with his personal life and mostly prior to his presidency under the protection of executive privilege and all of that. I'm going to see a really interesting conversation here, and you will too, with the Supreme Court. Uh, what the timetable on this is, I guess there'll be in no rush to take it, but the pressure continues to come on Donald Trump in terms of exposing his financial records uh, for purposes of investigation. Um, Stay tuned. Now, the whistleblower thing is now the theme for the weekend. The president has been tweeting his literal fanny off and is honing in on the whistleblower. Someone ought to tell the president, whatever the Democrats think they have for a case for impeachment, uh, it's past the whistleblower, latest from the network. Fiona Hill, President Trump's former rush expert on the National Security Council, arrived on Capitol Hill to review the transcript from her deposition. Impeachment investigators have been working behind closed doors, and the first transcripts from those interviews are expected to be released as early as today, with more to follow. I think you're going to see all of the transcripts that are going to be released probably within the next five days. Even before seeing the transcripts, President Trump is pushing back, accusing Congressman Adam Schiff of changing the words and saying Republicans should release their own transcripts. Yeah, they're going to release the real transcripts. Yeah, they're not going to, they're going to, well, I mean, who knows how much he redacts. Several witnesses scheduled to be deposed to date did not show up, but the lawyer for the whistleblower who triggered the impeachment inquiry says his client is willing to answer Republicans' questions in writing. President Trump, who answered special counsel Robert Mueller's questions in writing during the Russia election interference investigation, tweeted that the whistleblower must be brought forward to testify. Written answers not acceptable. The whistleblower should be revealed because the whistleblower gave false stories. Some people would call it a fraud. Democrats say they will protect the whistleblower's identity. You know, this is, this is nuts. This president is so irresponsible, he does not understand the protection for whistleblower and why whistleblowers have protection. By the way, the case is past the whistleblower at this point. Just is. And uh, anybody who's anybody who sees uh, problems in an organization on a federal level now, uh, and even in the business world, right? I mean, whistleblowing is really bad. We had a whistleblower expert here from Providence College a few weeks ago talking about the need for uh, the term. You know, it's funny you say a word or a concept over and over again and it starts to lose its meaning or become funny. But the whistleblower thing is not funny, uh, especially in the, in the financial world. Companies spend a lot of money uh, promoting the idea that whistleblowing is a good thing, meaning if someone's doing something untoward in an organization, never mind in uh, an environment around the White House, you ought to be able to come forward without losing everything. It's, by the way, it's why no one in Rhode Island says anything about anybody to anything. Everybody walks away around here afraid. Everybody's afraid of everything. And the president's not helping. All right, let's move along here. Here's a headline that uh, dictates the pace of this. No, 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 we're, uh, we're done with her. Uh, I, I, I X'd that off, didn't I? Oh, well, anyway, see, well, 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 now that you did it, bring her up. What the heck, Kev? Bring her up. That's Kat Kerwin. She's... Uh, a 22-year-old 
elected official who thought it was great to paint Columbus. I actually scratched this from our thing today thinking I'm done with Kat Kerwin, but since we popped her up, Kat, you'll grow up soon. Be patient. All right. The, anyway, let's uh, move along. The headline here, House to Pay for Independent Study of IGT Contract Extension. This is a, I don't know if I call it a win, but it's, it's a measure of respect, I think, the Speaker of the House has given to uh, our guest and his Republican comrades who have, I don't know, have you complained? I don't think you're complaining. I think you've, you've analyzed that the IGT Twin River billion dollar episode is past your pay grade and you need some help, right? Yes. Good to have you. Thanks for coming in. Happy to be here. You want to talk about Kat Kerwin? By any <laughs> just, just, I don't know. True, uh, the true righteous people who've engaged in civil disobedience in our country have faced the consequences of their actions. They haven't gone out in the dark of night and vandalized. They've sat down on buses and gotten arrested. Yes. Last time you were here, we got distracted into a really good conversation, but I'm going to halt this one because the one that we have you in for is really, really important. And by the way, I'm going to leave you of any discussion of the president since we got into that last time, too, okay. uh, unless you're itching. <laughs> you're itching. Uh, uh, once upon a time, we had a 20-year contract with IGT, formerly GTEC, to run the gaming operations in this state. They now have about three and change years left in their deal. The governor is looking to extend that deal, has provided the General Assembly a tentative agreement to do so. Uh, in the midst of this, Twin River has popped up and said uh, they can do it as well or better and save the taxpayers money. Uh, the governor has turned to Twin River and said, why don't you just uh, sit there and do what you do, which is to be the hospitality arm for the gaming operations. Uh, Twin River says that they can partner with three other companies to, to bring the same kind of services that IGT brings. Um, they're disappointed over IGT's dominance of the casino floors with the VLTs. They say that uh, they should and would like to, A, get a, a more of a voice as to what's on the floor, and B, probably a little bit of a piece of the action. So this whole thing has evolved into their claim that there ought to be a bid for this business, which is something that I think you early on acquiesced to, but you started to look at this thing from a finance uh, point of view and said it's so big and so complicated that we could use a consultant. Is that a fair summary? I think so, and I think we also have to put in there the, the factual analyses by the executive branch, Twin River and IGT, are so divergent that that's what clued me into saying, you know what, we need an expert to come in here and slice through all of this and to give us the skinny on what this contract really should cost and how much we're paying for the, these jobs and to tell us how are the IGT VLTs performing. Mm -hmm. You know, IGT said they're performing great. Twin River said, no, they're not. And also to help us with the, uh, the mix on the floor. This 85%, if we are to have one entity control it, which I'm not for, I, I want more competition on the floor with the VLTs, but if we are to go down that road, what type of uh, contractual provisions can we have to protect us from one company having 85 percent of the VLTs. So we, we should, well, let's, let's dig into some of those questions and numbers, then we'll talk about what kind of consultancy in our next segment, because it's a, that's an important part of all this. It's a very small industry. It's got big numbers, but it's a small player industry. There's not a lot of players, at least in the manufacturing side. Uh, you say you're uncomfortable with IGT having 85 percent of the floor. That's kind of the well, that is the, amongst the complaints that Twin River brings to the table. But they have 85 percent of the floor because of the totality of the deal that Governor Kacheri cut in 2003, which was that they would guarantee a thousand jobs, that they would centrally locate in Providence, that they would build a new building, that they would do all those things. And nobody has said that they haven't performed under the contract, at least for the, the big components of it, correct? I mean, there's been changes to the contract. There was a question as to whether the investments were made that were required. Um, there's a question as to whether the jobs... But I wouldn't suggest, you're a lawyer, it, I, you wouldn't suggest that there's been a material problem with the deal IGT has had with the state, would you? I think there's been material changes to the contract that Governor Kachiri entered into. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's been a breach. There's been adjustments. There's been adjustments, but there hasn't been a material breach of any agreement because that agreement has been changed by 
subsequent administrations. It dawns on me that I should have included this in the program today. My bad. Uh, this the, the Senate uh, uh, Finance Chairman Bill Conley, who was on my radio program last week, indicated that although he disagrees that we need an outside consultant and we can talk to that, he says one of the things that has been lacking during this current term with IGT is the proper diligence for these things, for the components of the deal, to make sure they're all on spec. Agree Would you agree to that? In, in disclosure to the legislative branch. I think at the very least we need a state law that mandates disclosure of any contractual amendments to legislative leadership. And that stuff happened kind of just inside the contract. It wasn't necessarily broadcast to the General Assembly slash the public. We're, we're, fi we're finding out. I'm finding out about a lot of the changes that happened. Over for, the past instance, seven. for instance, the, um, the job guarantee. Uh, you know, in state law, we require 250 percent of minimum wage for our job development uh, people who qualify for job development funds. And in the original contract, it was implied that that 250 percent would be the re requirement. And then the lottery uh, made an agreement that people at 150% of minimum wage uh, can count towards those 1,000 jobs. So I think that's a material change. Yet they balanced that by suggesting that the average earnings is $100,000 across the board for the 1,000 or so employees that they have. Um, is that 150 and 250%, I guess, for the lower, the lower paid earners in the company? Is that really important? I think so. I mean, we're, we're saying how important the 1,000 jobs are. Mm. It's the mantra. It's the reason why we shouldn't go out to bid. It's the, the reason why we want to keep IGT here is for these 1,000 jobs. I think a definition of what those 1,000 jobs are, I think, is critical. All right. So I, when we come back, we'll, we'll talk about the process and how to get the answers. Because God forbid you bring some consultants on and you still have questions. <laughs> Then what do you do? Push the panic button. Punch, as they say. We'll be right back. So originally, you had put out a press release uh, working off the suggestion from Alan Hassenfeld, former Hasbro executive, uh, because he had said publicly that, gosh, he would pay for a consultant to work out this IGT Twin River controversy. Uh, you noted that in your early press release saying, hey, we need a consultant for this IGT Twin River controversy. You and I had a mini battle over whether a private citizen of any kind should fund that. Um, I'm very thankful that you took that out of the equation and went the route of the General Assembly's taxpayer money funded JCLS fund, which is the Joint Committee on Legislative Services. I don't know where I am on the camera, but the, the um, it's the governing body of the legislature, right? That, yeah. That is flush with cash. I mean, the, the legislature needs to have its own operating budget. It's the legislature's operating budget. Right. So you were able to sell the speaker on the idea that it's time to study this thing. I, he was receptive to it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we sat down a couple times and spoke about the issues. He sees the issues and he understands how important this industry is to the state and for us to get it right. Senate doesn't think they need one. Senate's pretty uh, pretty happy with the, the their view of the thorough thoroughness of the work that they've done on their side. I'm sure they'll read our study. I'm, I'm sure they'll pay attention. They to did it. suggest. I mean, the chairman did say that uh, that they would peek at your study. There's no doubt about that. Um, what's the budget? What's this? Is is this a is this is a multi-month year study? I mean, what's your What's your business model for the study itself? So we obviously hope it isn't a multi-month study or multi-year. Mm. No, we're get, we, we intend to have the study done uh, by the end of January, maybe early February. Because uh, you want to make a legislative decision in this next working session, correct? I, I'm not under those pressures. I believe that other people are under those pressures. They want to move this issue along. The governor, uh, you know, I believe, IGT. I believe we have until 2022, but obviously we need to make a decision long before that. Um, but we will have the RFP out uh, probably tonight or tomorrow morning. The response is due within two weeks. We make a decision first week of December. Uh, we're requesting that the study be done by the end of January. Did you do some shopping in terms of what kind of field of consultants is out there? Yeah, we, we looked around. We found everything from small shops to investment banks, uh, companies who have helped states before. Uh, we kind of used Ohio as a model. Uh, they use an investment bank to come in at the beginning of the prof process, the governor did and really had a company as an advisor through all the negotiations with uh, gaming companies. 
And the challenge is to make sure whatever entity is doing the consulting is walled from yeah. the politics in the state, correct? And also from any other conflicts, because it's a small industry. You have really three major players, Scientific Games, Interlaw, and IGT. You got to make sure who you're hiring uh, does not have a conflict uh, by having a relationship with one of those companies. Do we find that to be an easy thing? I mean, investment banks, don't they come in with more financial expertise than actual clinical knowledge of the industry itself? That's, that's part of the worry, right? There's investment banks that have uh, gaming divisions. So we're not just going to pick some willy-nilly investment bank that you know only maybe invests in hedge funds or precious metals. We're going to find one that has a gaming division. Do you see this as handing over the conversation, uh, the actual decision-making process to a consultant? Or what do you want from a consultant? Do you want the consultant to tell you, well, IGT's deal is better than what Twin River is proposing? Do you want a consultant to tell you that IGT's deal is good enough to extend? Do you want the consultant to be able to say, you ought to go into a bidding process? Uh, what are you thinking you're going to take from the consultancy? So I, I think we have to go into it with an open mind and not have a predetermined result. Um, the issues that I think we need clarification on are, is there a job premium? Are we paying extra for these core services for the thousand jobs? Twin River, excuse me, uh, IGT has said you're paying zero premium. Twin River has said you're paying a $300 million premium over the life of the contract. I think we need some clarity on that. You know, what do these jobs cost us? And once we figure out what they cost us, we can determine whether it makes sense to essentially have a, a job development agreement in this legislation and contract. Uh, and we need some assistance with the VLTs. We need, we need someone to look at this and say, how are IGT's VLTs performing? Because IGT is saying they're performing great, and Twin River brought in some smart people who said, no, no, they're not performing great. And then we got to deal with the 85% control of the floor. And I'm concerned, uh, there might be things that we're not even looking at that an expert could say, listen, you put this one sentence in your contract, you're going to save millions of dollars. You're mm -hmm. going to protect yourself against some type of problem in the industry, some type of changing technology. You know, 15 years from now, can you picture people just sitting there hitting buttons? No, I don't. I see, I see technology changing. I see a new generation well, we of people have wanting... A, we, well, we already have an issue of sports gaming that has, that has been approved by the legislature but not approved by the people. Uh, you know, I'm not going to be a hypocrite. I've been playing around with thirty, forty dollars on my phone, having a good time <laughs> with it. But I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm robbing the bank in some ways because I do believe that the Constitution demanded that the people vote for that. So, one of the arguments that the uh, the plaintiffs bring to the table is the idea that if you can sports bet on your phone and it is included in the definition of gaming at the casino, then any game could be on the casino. Yeah. Blackjack and roulette could be on the phone from... It, you're right. This whole thing is going to get bigger and more complicated. So uh, I'm not trying to push phone gaming. I have the same constitutional concerns as you. Well, to your you. point, though, that, the, that it's not just people on the floor and pushing buttons all the time. But maybe you have new games on the floor that are more interactive that actually use... Oh, okay. You, you know, they, like you can play against well, people. Well, you've, well, oh, okay. You can play against your friends. It's like, if you go to the casinos now, it's mostly many older people playing VLTs. Staring. Staring and hitting pushing. that button. I don't see that lasting. I don't, especially with the subsequent generations. We have to get, uh, I, I think, new gamers in. And you have kids now who have like headsets on at home playing 3D games against people thousands of miles away. Those are the people we have to bring in with new technology if we are to sustain our gaming revenues. And I think we need to be careful about locking ourselves into a 20-year contract that doesn't have those guarantees mm. of the latest and greatest technology. Got you. Okay. But even still, this thing is still going to be a, you know, an issue when all of a sudden they say, okay, we got by the sports betting, now we want to play blackjack on yeah, it. Yeah, uh, I agree. The General Assembly is going to have to be very engaged in that as well. When we come back, this little mini controversy on IGT and Twin River and whether it has any impact on, impact on the uh, big decision. Stay with us. Well, I think you're actually understating how bad it is, because this reveals the fact that the state had basically decided to not enforce the rules against Twin River. And that is, I think, in many ways the bigger story. 
that there has been this long agreement that everybody gives the big gambling interests whatever they want. It doesn't matter about ethics principles. It doesn't matter how much money they rip away from struggling families. It doesn't mat matter the damage they do to our state as long as they can say that they create jobs and they provide a little bit of revenue to the state of Rhode Island, we give them whatever they want. A different perspective from State Senator Sam Bell, uh, who when I asked about this controversy with the Chief of Staff of the Governor and his alleged muscling of the executive at Twin River, Mr. Crisofulli, and regulatory lashback, he went to a deeper conversation, which is, hey, listen, we're, you know, we're screwing, we're screwing Rhode Islanders by taking their gambling money. It's a whole different conversation, you know. Do you think about the conscience of, of the gaming issue in the middle of this whole thing? All the time. I, I'm concerned about balancing our budget on vice. I think it is the gambling industry has enabled us not to make the fundamental changes to the way we do business in this state, and we're not encouraging organic, widespread economic growth. Hmm. And I think the gambling industry allows us to do that. Uh, that, with that being said, we're in the gaming industry. Right. Let's get it right. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. I, I think it's. I think that's practical, pragmatic. Uh, this controversy that uh, the chief of staff and you know, we've talked about it a couple of times. Uh, you want that investigated? You know, I think it'll come. To, do I want it investigated by what modality? By I'm not sure. The, it okay. seems to me the attorney general is the only place that that seems to be right for it to land. I asked the. Senate Finance Chairman, who was the one who was in receipt of the letter from Mr. Crisofulli about these threats he felt like he was getting, and he said, well, you know, I'm just not going to do anything with it. I said, well, are you going to formally hand it to the Attorney General? He said, no, I'm not going to do that. I mean, he can read the news. So I, I thought that was kind of a, kind of a weird thing. Uh, but does it just kind of fizzle, or does it, uh, does it end up scrutinized? I don't know. As, as a legislator, I'm concerned about turning our process now from facts and data and dealing with this enormous contract and getting it right to this kind of sideshow, which this will become if it's handled on the legislative les uh, issue through oversight. I think we're going to take a lot of people's eyes off the ball where we need to keep them. There's a way to investigate this through the Attorney General's office. If threats were made, extortionate threats were made, they need to be investigated. Well, you guys often pop up and say, this should be done, and this should be done. And on this case, you, you won the day uh, on the consultancy. Perfect. Will the Republicans stand up and say, that should be investigated? Or do you think that we'll tear away from that which you want to see done, and that is to do the analysis on the big picture? So I have 20 I'll, seconds. I'll, I'll say no. I think, I think it should be investigated. I don't think it's the legislator's province at this time to investigate it. You want to stay out of it. I want to stay out of it because we're focused on major issues and we're making progress on major issues. Hmm. I kind of see that as something that should be handled by our other general office, the Attorney General's office. Okay. So far, no interest at that shop, but we'll see. Good work on this. Keep in touch with it. Thanks, Blake Flippy, Minority Leader. Final word when we come back. Turbulence over where the Board of Elections is going to be in the future. The subject of tomorrow's conversation, former mayor Joe Paolino will be on the set. And we'll tune in to you or you'll tune in to me or we'll tune in to each other tomorrow weekdays 3 till 6 on WPRO. Thanks for tuning in. Good night.